Please look directly into the camera, pretend it's the center of my forehead, and give it a wet smooch. <laughs> there you go. There's your fucking smooch. A couple things I'm thinking about today before playing, especially in, in deep stack cash, is that a lot of the times, like, like enough good situations happen and you're paid when you shouldn't often enough in, in these cash games that I'm playing that you don't need to make big call downs with second best hands, keep people honest. Okay, we got bounties, possible bounties up here. Yeah, I'm just gonna get, rec <laughs> get reckless with it. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't super certain. I just was like, hey, I've got all of them covered. Oh, fuck. And I've got a nice hand. What? He's eight. Bro, you don't got to call that. You really don't. Oh, and he's going to win, too. Oof. Ouchie. Nice one, though. His heroism was rewarded. <laughs> ah. Ribeye. They call it in full, but, but otherwise, I got to call it. I think. Just his pot odds be a thing when i say pot odds are a thing what i mean is i'm gonna be getting i have to call 5.7 for 11.7 which is basically two to one i've got 33 percent or more equity eh, roughly against the range but you don't love it you don't love it poker stars you got cash games on wpt global uh 50 100 200 we got this 600 bounty over here this might have been a bad open with everyone uh, having me covered. It's like bottom of range usually, but then people should be playing wider. You know, I was talking about this. I mean, I'm not an unfriendly person. I don't think like I, I really do want to be a caring dude, but yeah, like I value kindness for sure, undoubtedly. However, if I'm in like get shit done mode sometimes, or if you're like, I'm not the best with authority either. Like if somebody tries to tell me what to do, I don't handle it very well. A couple times I've had to go back and apologize. <laughs> oh shit. Down in the cash game. Seems like a spot we want to ISO. Uh oh, it's gonna be hard not to go broke here. Oh, speaking of going broke, I mean, I'm scared, but like, I still feel like there's probably enough value in shoving. Oh, if snap calls, I lose. Yeah, fuck. What a turn. What a turn. I mean, I feel like this hand probably wants to call, even though this player doesn't seem very loose or anything, but this is a small three bet. It does suck because <clears throat> small three bets kind of are weighted towards over pairs, but at this point, we're like, what are we gonna do? Like, it feels like Ace King, though. Uh, let me remind, like, make that note that they do that, though. Ace in your face? No. I guess I'll re enter. You say love how I fires off my bankroll in one bullet. I'm talking about how, how I've, I've been dropping down stakes. <laughs> We're gonna wanna call. I'm gonna check to see if uh, all my lights are on. It feels a little dim in here. Wait, um, I'm not sure what this is. Uh, it looks kind of dim too, doesn't it? Oh shit, man. We're in. Hey, pocket threes up here. I have no idea what that's about. Ah. Right here in the cash game, we just three bad aces. It says we're like 200 big blinds deep, but because of the structure being, uh, you know, small blind, big blind straddle, it's actually like we're 100 big blinds deep. Plus there's an ante, so it's like super aggro. I mean, this is a raise that's not folding. I mean, we're just going to have to go with it, right? Right, row. No insurance. I would want to run it. Fuck. Twice, though. Oof. Ace of spades. Ooh. Ooh. The main recommendation I have if you're going to play MTTs, especially if you're playing like a low ABI, mix up your field size and actually try to have more of a um, small field size, even if it's not exciting to play for those stakes to you. I'm pretty sure that this is right regarding like big fields versus small fields. The main reason that you're going to have an edge 
in big fields is because if there's that many players, there's almost always going to be bad players. But sometimes I think that people are kind of doing it wrong when they play like an ABI of 20, but then like always play the Sunday million. And then like, because it's like, man, if you're going to take a shot, taking a shot in that one is crazy because I mean, yes, it's soft, but um, like it takes a long time to see the long run in that. And it's one of those tournaments that you're either down a ton or you're up a ton, right? You, either final table top five it or whatever or, you, or even yeah just final table it <laughs> don't be it don't do it don't do that all right <laughs> we're doing pretty good at the races today i feel good about it 22 ish 20 choose larger because i feel like giving him like because of the bounties there's a little better pot odds to call you don't like king a king on the flop in this spot just because three bet call range has kings in it right um but at this point you are you have one spr i guess i'll just give him the option to bet pretty solid river for me Good start towards the end of late registration in this one. I think this will play better calling and hoping that this the big blind goes all in and then under the gun shoves whole range. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like such a genius. I don't even care about that or this. I'm just glad that my play worked. Oh no. Gross. <laughs> That's like they slow rolled us too and when they did it three bet out of position here got called in those spots okay I mean I think perhaps I got lucky did I check That was a nice spot. What's your opinion on late regging PKO? Man, I was working with Cami the other day and, and they showed me that like if you reg like last minute in, a, in certain kinds of PKOs that you're like losing to, like 21% ROI. You really shouldn't late reg them because essentially your EV in the bounty pool is represented by um, like your stack divided by all the stacks times the bounty pool. So if the bounty pool's gone, like you're actually taking a hit to the uh, to your EV. You don't want to late reg uh, bounties past like 80% of the field. For what it's worth, I've done it a gazillion times and I've actually won tournaments where I, I late reg. <laughs> like I, I won a 1K that I late reg. Oh, it looks like we're on a money bubble. That's kind of fun. I like when they sneak up on you like that. <laughs> Although it does kind of suggest that you're not being very aware. So we're playing the 2,500 uh, monday gg here do you think on the queen river that we can actually min bet for value with a three i'm not sure ha <laughs> yes i love it those kinds of little moments are like why i play poker it's <laughs> just getting the thin values or the big bluff through oh my gosh miguel miguel i mean miguel just has like hair but like, I almost, eh. <laughs> Miguel, Miguel. Up here, uh, I mean, he just donk shoved into us. We obviously have the best hand right now, but not by much. He probably has a draw of some sort. Yeah. Three of 16 now, let's go. Down here, I'm trying to mess with Slenderman. Trap a three bet, because it just seems like, like they're taking every spot. Yeah, exactly. Fuck. <laughs> That's not even fair, man. He's literally had like every. Oh, man. I mean, I can't feel bad going out like that, but man, it sucks the money bubble. Okay. They had better than you think in that spot. Yes. Final table. Let's go. It's pretty meaningful because, like, uh, I started my Poker Stars account because I, I can't get transfers right now. I started with like 3K in my Poker Stars account. So if I can build the Stars account, it would be very nice. At the other table, we uh, just flopped a straight. They're going to see that. We'll probably just shove, I mean, or raise.
<laughs> That's exactly how this fucking day is going. Like, ooh, the good news is that Carster is busting everybody. And uh, we are a third of six. Sixth place gets paid 4,700. Three or five remaining though. Hey, if we do well in this one, it's still a good day, right? Three of spades is a straight flush. A call. Right now, guaranteed 8,000. We want that five figure score. It's just that I, I feel my edge and I think I'm quite good. So I feel like I should like maybe win a lot all the time. Hard to do. This is fun though. This is pretty lucky here for sure for time of running good. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. I never actually feel that good about getting aces versus kings because I know that if we like reverse the hands, we'd have the same outcome. We play the same. Eh, they're gonna shove deuces. Oopsies. But they never loses. <sighs> Man. See, like six is just something I'd call, but like deuces, um, yeah, they play kind of poorly heads up. We'll take a look if I can do that later. I think it's all right. He might be really tight, though, opening to those two players, which makes it worse, right? I guess my point is that deuces are kind of similar to, like, sixes pre-flop in that, like, he's never going to raise call sixes or fives. Um, oh, yeah, I'm out. Yeah. GG. Jolt said, I'm so impressed with myself being able to stay away from drugs with quite ease, actually. Was it once a problem? Either way, it's a good decision, man. Overall, you just feel much worse um, on lots of drugs or like drinking often. It's just nice to be able to like actually know that you are in control of your decisions, you know? Hey, Great Bluff. I don't think. This is going to be a winning pot for me. All in might be cool. Or like check raise. Bam. We want a nine ball. Nine. Nine. <laughs> nine. <laughs> yes. Dip the 700. Sorry. <laughs> I think this shows. Dun, 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 dun. Oh no, we gotta get there. We gotta get there. We gotta get there. Dun, 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 dun. No! Man, I was so excited about that. <laughs> Shit, that was like 80%. No! Such good starts that ended poorly. I guess that is poker for you. Oh man, I just got all in here. They just call K9, no problem. Uh, 50 bigs, I guess. This is a really soft table, too. I love that I click buttons for a living. Pay the man. Pay the man. Oh, my gosh. Pay the man. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Sometimes I forget the beauty of the fact that people just watch me to play poker. When I was younger, I never knew what I wanted to do. Like, I thought music, but I sucked at it. Um, didn't have much of an ear for it. Then I thought psychiatry, but or, or psychology, but um, I got really tired really fast of academia. And like, to me, it just seemed like people, oh man, this, this is bullshit right there. But to me, it, it seemed like just a lot of big words to describe a simple concept. And it was really inefficient. It also just seemed kind of uh, competitive. So I got really bored with that too. And I was like, damn, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. So I'm really happy that I found poker. Over here, we're raising the lint. Do I have to call an all in? Eh, sure. <laughs> what? 
literally dude had a worse hand than me and still okay okay no cancels no cancels i'm telling y'all this this is a 50 100 200 game play this shit pop quiz what are your chances of hitting a flush draw about 35 percent especially if i got an over that's an extra three outs but actually my chances are 100 percent let's go let's go <laughs> i knew it limp the button here Flop bottom pair uh you can check you can bet the minimum too and you can <laughs> it's always fun when that happens oh do you have the four do you have the four? Oh no i hate that card you know what i'm gonna do right now i'm gonna play our hyper heads up sit and go Seventy. <laughs> oh, I'm done. I'm done, guys.